what do we need to do? We need to go to the movie catalog service. The resource here, I'm doing a singleton list, but this will not do. What I want to do is get, actually there are a couple of steps here, right? The first step is get all rated movie IDs, and then for each movie ID, call the final step is to put them all together. Make sense? Now, this is what I'm going to be doing, right? The part where I'm calling the movie info service and getting the movie information back. That's what I'm going to be doing. So I am going to hard code the ratings for now, OK? The way I do that is first I'm going to get the ratings resource. I'm going to copy this here. Sorry, the model. I'm going to copy this here because we need the model. We need to store the ratings information. So I'm going to paste it here. And then here I'm going to hard code just that part. I'm going to create a list of rating. It is supposed to be done through REST template. So the communication happens through REST template. But then what you get back is going to be string. You need objects to deal with the data. Whenever you, in Java, you need to deal with data, you need objects. The objects needs to be of a particular class. So you're going to create the class. Here it happens to be the same exact class, so I've just copied that over. Yes, controller doesn't fit in return the objects. It'll return a string, right? Yeah. It'll return a string, time, right? but then you can also unmarshal it. Hold that thought for a bit, okay? Let's assume we are not doing REST template. We're just hard coding it. The whole thing, the whole communication we're hard coding. What would be the first step? You need to create a bunch of responses from the first API, hard code a bunch of responses from the second API, and then do it. So to hard code it, you need classes. So that's what I'm doing here. So I'm creating um, an array of a bunch of ratings. Let's say one, two, three, four. Rating is four, and then one more, five, six, seven, eight. Let's say rating is three. Okay, let's assume this is the response we got from that rating data API, right? So somebody has come to us and said, for this user, give me all the movies he's watched and the details. So we have to first get the movies he's watched. That's what we're hard coding. Now that we have the movies that they have watched, we need to get the details. And for this, we're going to make the API call. How are we going to make the API call? Using REST template. So I'm going to loop through this. Um, and create a stream. I can either do a for loop or a, I can do a map. Let's say I do a map. So for each rating, I need to replace rating with the catalog item. All right, so I need to get that information here. Then I'm going to collect collectors.toolList. All right, make sense? And now I can return this. Questions about what I'm doing here? I've hard coded the ratings. For each rating, I should be making a call to the API, but I'm not doing that. I'm just creating a catalog element with hard coded name and description. These name and descriptions should actually come from the API, right? I'm hard coding it, and then I'm making it a list and then returning that. I'm going to get rid of this. Make sense? Now we're going to change this to make a call for each of those movies. So we're going to make a call to movie uh, info, get the movie details, and that's what the user needs to see. All right, so I can do that. Over here, I'm going to make this a block. It's no longer a single line. Um, 
what do I need to do? I need to first create an instance of REST template. REST template is going to be the utility object which lets me make these calls. Okay, so I'm going to say new REST template. I'm going to let me create this instance over here at the top. I'll create a new REST template. And the REST template has methods on it. Dot get for object, okay? And what does this do? It takes in two arguments. The first argument is the URL that you want to call. This doesn't have to be a microservice. It could be any URL. It's going to make a call. It's going to make a REST call to it, right? And what it gets back, it's a string, right? It also helps you unmarshal it into an object. So if you know what the payload of that response is, in this case, we know it's going to be movie info, you can provide a class which has the same properties as the JSON, and what this REST template is going to do is it's going to create that instance of the class, populate those properties to it, and it's going to give you a fully formed object, right? All that is happening in this one line. So it's um, two parameters. The first parameter is the URL. What's the URL? The URL is the movie URL here. It's localhost 8081 slash movies slash movie ID. And then the second argument is the movie information. So this is a payload which has two properties, movie ID and name. So I have a class sitting here which has just that. So I'm just going to use it. See here? This is a class which has the movie ID and the name. You can technically create an entirely different class. It's perfectly fine, but I'm just going to copy this. Now, some of you might be asking, isn't it a bad thing to do copy-paste of classes? You have duplicate copies of the same class all over the place. Isn't that something that's frowned upon? Well, in a monolithic application, yes. You don't want to have multiple copies of the same class. But in a microservice, this is technically allowed. Why? Because you can, well, you can not, you can avoid doing this. Like, right? let's say you want to create a library of all these model classes and then use that as a dependency in all these different things. What's the drawback of that? Somebody wants to change that. Well, you're going to have to manage all those things. And you, you defeat the purpose of microservices being independent things. Right? You want to be able to deploy one without having to care about what the other team is doing. If you use the sh same shared library, you're bound. The release cycles are bound, all that stuff. So it's perfectly OK to create copies of these classes. Uh, the side benefit of this is, let's say there are more stuff there in that class that's beneficial for that microservice. But you don't care about that. You can just use the fields that you want here. So you, those classes usually, in my experience, even though they start out as copies, since they're completely different things, they end up taking different paths. And the classes kind of diverge from there on. And at that point, people realize, oh, it's a good thing we created those copies. So it's perfectly OK to create copies of these classes. You can, but then would it be sharing those interfaces? Because again, you're going to run into. You can, you technically can, but then again, you're going to run in. Yeah, what if you need to change the interface? And then you again have the dependency. So it's it's a little less likely that you're going to change interfaces than the core classes, but then you never know. Mm -hmm. So I think that my implementation, maybe I added the com use this on the com logic, I think. So should I make an inform to you so you have to update the, whatever the code I am using? Or, uh, yes, if it's not backward compatible, you will have to let people know. Versioning is a whole different uh, topic when it comes to microservices. How do you version your microservices? If you're adding a new field, it's fine. People who don't use it don't care, and you can they can upgrade whenever they want. What if you're removing a field, or what if you're changing a name of a field? Then you have to let people know, or maybe create a new version, v1 slash API, right? You put it in a different URL so that you know if you want to get the new version, you have to call a different URL. So it's it's a big it's a big topic in itself how you manage versioning. All right, so back to back to REST template. This is the line we're working on. 
okay? This has to go somewhere else. It shouldn't be here. It should be this call for each rating, rated movie, right? So every, every movie that the user has watched, we need to fetch the data. But here, this is the signature. This is what needs to happen. Whenever you need to make a call, this is what you need to do. REST template dot get for object. You're saying get me the resource and unmarshal it into an object, right? It takes two arguments. One is the URL that it needs to get, and the second is the class that it needs to unmarshal to. It's going to take that payload, and then it's going to return a movie object, right? As easy as that. So I'm going to use this. So I'm going to use this piece, get rid of this here. And what I need to do here is, for every rated movie, I need to take that movie ID, and I need to call the movie information API with that ID. Okay, so I'm going to call this, but not with foo all the time. I'm going to append the rating dot get movie ID. Okay, so for each iteration, it's going to make a separate call, and it's what it gets back here is that particular movie. So first time, it's going to make a call to movie ID one two three four. Second, it's going to make a call to five six seven eight. All these calls are synchronous. Yes, you can, and that's where uh, the web client comes in. That's where it gets uh, into the uh, the reactive programming. You can make it asynchronous, but then when you make it asynchronous, you have to make this asynchronous as well. Because if you're returning a single object, you have to block until you get that object and return it. But there are ways in which you can return uh, like a mono or a flux object from Spring controllers, so that you're telling Spring, "Hey, I've set things in motion. Whenever it returns, return it to the user," and then you move on to do something else. So you can technically do that. If you guys are interested, I'm happy to do like just not even microservices, just a Spring Boot uh, workshop where we just do asynchronous uh, Spring Boot. So yeah, that's that's a whole different way of doing things. Okay, now that I have this uh, movie object, which is just the movie we want, right? We have picked the ID, made a call just for the movie we want, and now we are we can return the catalog item, but rather than hard code the name, I'm going to return movie.getName. Is this making sense? I, don't, I guess I don't have a movie.description. Yeah, I don't have a description, so I'm just going to hard code the description for now. And then the rating is going to be rating dot get rating okay so this is where I'm putting those two together so this piece is the first API call to movie info this piece is the second API call to the rating database which we have hard-coded for now but you know the idea is to convert it into a live API call later All right and then I do a collect to a list where you return it back restart this. I think I have an error. This is semicolon. Not this one. There is an error. 404 seems very odd. Anybody? Ideas? Oh, okay, I see what you mean. Okay, uh, yeah, you're right. Thank you, this is 8082. This is, uh, we're doing a lot of bad things here. I'm just gonna list out what, what are the bad things we're doing. But we have to make this work first. Uh, cannot construct an instance. Okay, so this is another thing that uh, you have to watch out for. When you, when you have Java unmarshal something which is not an object to an object, you need to provide it an empty constructor. This movie doesn't have an empty constructor, so I'm just going to put that there. The way the uh, marshalling and unmarshalling things work is Java first creates an instance and then parses the string and then populates it one by one. So if you don't have an empty constructor, it doesn't have anything to create an instance, and that's why it's complaining. Uh, yeah. Don't have the yeah, so I have, uh, I have an overloaded constructor, so that's the problem. Okay, and now you see, you get the, the 
values from the hard-coded ratings API call, and then the live data from the uh, from the API. Of course, it's not technically not live data, but it's making an API call. So what it's doing is actually making multiple API calls, right? So they have a, a list of two items. For each item, one microservice running on this separate Tomcat instance, making a REST call to another microservice running on a separate Tomcat instance, that returns back, it unmarshals it, and you're putting all the data together and returning it back. And look at the amount of code it took to do this. This is it. It's like three lines of code. So this is one of the reasons why Spring has become very popular. It, it does a lot of things for you behind the scenes, and other frameworks are kind of catching up as well. 